exciting times. It was, really. it was a tremendously exciting times. And I, I wish that all kids somehow could, could grow up in a similar time where exploration is, is the, the, the greatest thing that your country is doing. It, it's not war or economics or anything else, but exploration. I mean, that's the most exciting time. I mean, you can imagine living in Spain. Uh, during the era uh, right after Columbus and, and finding the New World. I mean, what, how exciting that must have been mm -hmm. to get on those ships and to come across and discover not only the New World, but also to the Orient and, and uh, everything that, that came out of that. And, and for a period there in the 50s, it looked like to us kids that we were going to live in a very similar age mm -hmm. where we were going to go out and settle uh, the planets. And, uh, oh, it was so exciting. And I, I hope that that day will come again. We haven't done that yet. We kind of put that aside. So a lot of the kids out there right now, you know, uh, they may yet grow up in that age of exploration. Uh, let's go back and talk a little bit about your experience. You, you worked for some years for the Army Missile Command or, or something in uh, Huntsville and then transferred to NASA. And you did a lot of really interesting stuff. It was the Army Missile Command that, that I worked for, for for many years, and um, but I always wanted to work for the Civilian Space Agency, mm -hmm. and um, it uh, I was very fortunate to come on board with NASA at Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, where I lived, um, in 1981, mm -hmm. uh, just as the space shuttle started to fly. And I actually came across, um, uh, NASA was kind of interested in what I was doing in terms of some computer systems that I was working on at that time. So I came across to, to work, uh, help NASA uh, bring this system in. And that really wasn't what I wanted to do. And the neat thing about NASA is that uh, once you're on board, you can kind of express an interest. Uh, and, and they will generally let you go off and do whatever you wanted to do. And one of the things that I was absolutely fascinated with was training. I'm a scuba instructor, and so I had a kind of a natural inclination to try to train uh, to, uh, to, that, that whole idea of educating uh, people who work for NASA was very interesting to me, especially the astronauts. And um, because um, astronauts generally will tell you that they pretty well already know everything. <laughs> so uh, to, to develop a, a curriculum in order to train them to me was, was, was just a fascinating aspect. And so. Uh, it turned out that basically what I did, uh, after a, an initial uh, period of helping to design the Space Lab, which was a joint NASA-European Space Agency uh, program that put a canister, it was kind of the forerunner of space station in the, in the cargo bay of the space shuttle where the astronauts mm -hmm. could work and, and do scientific experiments. After I finished that, um, then I went over into the training world, and that was fascinating because uh, I would get to go out to universities in other countries like Japan, and uh, work with the scientists who were developing experiments that would fly aboard the space lab in the space shuttle, and uh, help them not only figure out how we're going to train the astronauts to operate these experiments, but also uh, how to actually design the experiments themselves. And to me, that was fascinating. I got to fly on the uh, KC-135, the Vomit Comet, as oh, yes. it's called, uh, the zero G. I got to uh, also. Uh, work underwater uh, with in the suit, in the space suit, uh, the extravehicular activity suit, EVA suit as they call it. Um, and um, uh, because underwater you can simulate weightless conditions. And uh, so uh, put all that together. Every morning, uh, I have to say I had two twin passions in life. One of them was working for NASA, the other one was writing. I've been very, very fortunate that I've been able to, to uh, accomplished both of my passions. During all the years I worked for the Missile Command and NASA, I continued to write. I always had something in print. Uh, I, you know, I didn't have to be a, a space engineer, mm -hmm. but I had to be a writer. That was the, the part of my, of my makeup that, that I had to be. But I loved working for NASA, and every morning when I woke up, I thought to myself, oh boy, I get to go work for NASA today. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I just can't wait for the day. And it will come when, when the people of NASA are turned on again to exploring the solar system. And not only exploring it, but actually planning people uh, on the planets and, uh, and then on out to the stars. Um, I'm only sorry that I didn't get to work during that era. That's an era yet to come, and it's going to be a great one. Yeah, it is. 
you know, uh, uh, this film that was made from, your book was called Rocket Boys. Right. But they changed it into October <laughs> Sky, which I understand is an anagram. anagram. They rearranged the letters. Move the letters uh, of Rocket Boys yeah, around. It's the only yeah. anagram, October Sky. Uh, you know, uh, it has obviously made people go and read your book, which is great because you're apparently making a big impact My on publisher these people. likes that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> but um, uh, about the film, I often wonder, you know, I've heard people uh, say, well, they made a movie out of my book or uh, they wrote about my life, but they really got it balled up. Uh, Rocket Boys and October yeah. Sky are pretty close, but there are some different things. I'm well, not trying to get you to, to, to ding the film or the book, either one, but I'm just curious, how did you feel when you saw the movie? Well, you know, authors tend to criticize movies made out of their books for a lot of reasons. Um, and especially when it's a movie that's about your life that's based on the book. You know, that, that, that really hits close to home. Um, October Sky is, is a bit different from the book, needless to say. Uh, but I don't complain about it because um, it works. It, uh, I saw October Sky from its very inception. I saw the first screenplay. I called it the Bad News Bears launches rockets. I hated that screenplay. I said, uh, you know, the, the way this, uh, this thing is laid out, as far as I could tell, the screenwriter did it did his research by watching that old movie called How Green Was My Valley. Oh. It was basically a replay of that. It was just awful. And I said, you know, I can't go up to West Virginia and knock on every door and apologize to everybody in the state. You can't make this movie. Unfortunately, um, the, the, see, the, the screenplay was written before the book came out, and it was based upon a, uh, just a partial manuscript. So they all had their idea of how it was going to be. But the director and other people read the book, the real book, and, and so they had a dilemma on how to take this screenplay and kind of merge it with, with the better story in Rocket Boys. And uh, so it's kind of an amalgam of the two. Uh, but, you know, you've only got 90 minutes to two hours to tell a story. Rocket Boys was a story that happened over a three-year period, and there were myriad other stories embedded in that, and all kinds of threads and different layers to this book. Uh, Hollywood has to take uh, any, any book and simplify it to its barest bones, and then add certain uh, kind of push-button things that Hollywood likes, like destruction of personal property. They like to get as much of that <laughs> as they possibly can get into a movie. Um, and uh, they, uh, when it's, um, they saw it at first as a kid's movie, and of course the kids have to be extremely smart and intelligent and hip, and all the adults have to be complete idiots. So this was essentially, you know, the couple of things that Hollywood, they wanted to push those buttons, and we had to soften all of that somehow and still get the aspect of the, of the story in there and within this 90-minute uh, uh, two-hour period. Well, I think it turned out awfully well. Uh, there are things that I don't like about it. I hate the fact that they showed me quitting school. I would have never quit school. My parents would have lived in a tree before I would quit school. But they actually reached out into another, you see, Rocket Boys is a trilogy. It's Rocket Boys, The Cold Way, and Sky Stone. The, the nearly quitting college and going to, and actually I did go to work in the coal mine, that's in Sky Stone. They didn't know that was coming, but they knew that, that eventually I did that. So they, were, they grabbed that little piece and brought it back into uh, the October Sky story. And it all works. Uh, as you say, it does, it does cause a lot of people to read the book, but I think it's inspirational by itself. And wherever it's being shown around the world, I know it because we have a website, homerhickam.com, and people find that. And um, I know that the movie's being shown in Argentina right now because mm -hmm. we're getting lots of email from Argentina. And it inspires people, not only just kids, adults. We've had adults quit what they're doing and go back to college, not to become an engineer necessarily, but mm -hmm. simply because they saw, well, if these kids in this little coal town in West Virginia can do this, well, I can too, you know? I can do... I can reach my passion, and I'm sorry that I let my passion go. I'm going to go back to college, and I'm going to do what I want to do. So, I mean, I can't argue with the, with the results yeah. of the movie at all.